Imagine a truck capable of crossing rivers, blizzards, and impossible terrain as if they were nothing but playground paths, and that could even survive a nuclear blast. That is the Ural 375, a legendary military off-roader that not only transported cargo and troops, but also served as a platform for artillery and specialized equipment. Today I'll tell you how it was born, how it faced extreme challenges, and how it became an icon of Soviet engineering that still leaves its mark on history. The Ural 375, a legendary military off-roader. The Ural 375 is considered one of the most outstanding all-wheel drive military trucks in the world during the Cold War era. Its ability to take on difficult terrain, deep snowstorms, and even four deep rivers was simply astonishing. Its versatility was unmatched, it could serve as a flatbed truck, tractor, or troop transport vehicle. On top of that, countless superstructures and special equipment could be mounted on its chassis, turning it into a truly multifunctional all-terrain machine. The conflict between factories, Zil and Ural. The debut of this truck was not free from controversy. The appearance of the Ural 375 sparked tensions between the teams of the Soviet Union's two major automotive factories, Zil and the Ural Automotive Plant. This conflict went far beyond aesthetics, it represented a battle for leadership in technological innovation and military vehicle design. Even the exact depth of the rivers the experimental prototype was supposed to cross became a heated subject, as it would directly influence the later creation of an amphibious truck. Origins in the 1,950 seconds. The story of the Ural 375 begins in the mid-1,950 seconds at the Ural automobile plant, named after Stalin and located in the city of Mass. At the time, the plant had already spent more than a decade producing the famous Soviet zis is 5 trucks, widely used by the Red Army during World War II. After the war, modernized versions such as the zis 5 m the ZIS 130C and the Ural ZIS 355 were built. Between 1958 and 1965, production was established for the newest and final model of this line, the Ural 355M. Evacuation and relocation of the industry. Automotive development in Maz received a decisive boost during the German Soviet War. In October 1941, Nazi troops were advancing rapidly toward Moscow. The State Defense Committee, led by Stalin, ordered the evacuation of several industries from the Soviet capital to Central Asia or the Ural region. Equipment and workers from the Stalin automobile plant were transferred to two cities simultaneously, Ulanovsk and Mass. In Ulanovsk, ZIS-5 vehicles were assembled, while in Mass, inside an unfinished factory originally meant for munitions and aerial bombs, production of ZIS engines and transmissions was set up. Birth of the engine plant. During the first two years after engine production began, the plant was known as the MAS Automobile Engine Plant. However, in the spring of 1944, the State Defense Committee renamed it. It became the MAS Automobile Plant in honor of Stalin and was ordered to begin manufacturing ZIS-5 trucks. This truck and its modernized versions would remain on the plant's assembly line for more than two decades. The need for a new vehicle. By the mid-1950 seconds, it was clear in mass that no matter how much the ZIS-5 nicknamed Zahar was modernized, it remained technically and morally outdated. Mass production of the improved Ural 355M was only a temporary solution. A completely new vehicle had to be created. The project received decisive support from the Soviet military, which in the mid-1950 seconds was renewing and expanding its fleet of military trucks. Lack of medium capacity trucks. The army lacked medium capacity all-wheel drive vehicles needed to tow artillery and serve as a base for various superstructures. Initially, Moscow's Zil plant was considered for the job, with plans to move the production of the Zil 157 military truck to Ulanovec. However, the Ministry of Automotive Industry opposed the idea, arguing that relocating production would waste time and money. 
the best solution was to develop a new truck from scratch at the mass plant. Arrival of the NAMI 021. On the 17th of May 1957, 18 engineers and designers from NAMI arrived at the mass plant, bringing technical documentation and a prototype of the NAMI 021 truck. This vehicle would become the basis for the future all-wheel drive truck to be produced in Ural. To refine the design and adjust all tactical and technical characteristics to military requirements, a special design bureau was created, consisting of the 18 NAMI employees and an equal number of local Ural engineers and designers. Essential Technical Modifications The NAMI 021 turned out to be a rather rudimentary vehicle that did not meet military standards. Major changes were necessary. The GZ63 front axle, which was not unified with the rear and middle axles, was replaced. The driveline joint and steering mechanism were redesigned, and a rear winch with power, takeoff, and cable spool was installed. It was also necessary to completely seal the engine and other vital components so the truck could ford water obstacles up to six feet deep, bringing water almost up to the driver's neck. Design Innovations The transfer case design was modified and internal tire inflation was implemented. Unlike the external system of the NAMI 021, the most heated debate centered on the shape of the body. While the NAMI 021 had a rounded shape, designers at the Ural plant proposed a straight, angular form inspired by the famous American Studebaker US-6 trucks. This new shape was more practical and easier to manufacture. One could stand or even lie on the straight fender, making engine maintenance far more convenient. Development and prototypes. Work on the blueprints and final design of the vehicle lasted three and a half months, from mid-May to the 1st of September 1957. In August of the following year, the first prototype bearing the rather long name Ural Zaznami, 375 was produced. The official presentation of the first two trucks took place on the 7th of November 1958. The vehicles were then sent to factory tests, where they displayed operational characteristics that were not entirely satisfactory, requiring improvements. Cabins and nuclear protection. The cabins of the first trucks were completely metal, taken from the ZIL 130 model, which was still being prepared for mass production. However, these closed cabins did not satisfy the military, who were considering the possibility of a nuclear conflict. The solution was a folding cabin with a canvas roof, reducing the vehicle's height by two feet and seven and a half inches. The prototypes built in June 1959 adopted this configuration, two with canvas roofs and one fully enclosed. Initial mass production. The factory produced the first 10 series vehicles on January 31st, 1961. In total, 375 trucks were assembled that year, barely one-third of the approved plan. Most were sent to the army, which installed superstructures and carried out testing. It was then that the BM-21 Grad multiple rocket launcher system was mounted for the first time on the chassis of the Ural 375, continuing the tradition of the legendary Katyusha rocket mortar system from World War II. Testing and challenges of the Ural 375. During artillery system tests held between March 1st and May 1st, 1962 at a military range in Lenrad, significant faults were discovered in the chassis. Cracks appeared in the rear axle, requiring reinforcement of the frame. A river fording attempt of six feet nearly ended in disaster. The fully sealed experimental truck lost contact with the riverbed and began to float. The military then reduced the required fording depth from six feet to five. Amphibious innovation. This incident inspired the designers in mass to pursue a bold idea, creating a floating truck, which materialized under the name Ural 375 P, the letter P, standing for amphibious pavement. The truck successfully passed its tests, but the project was abandoned, likely for being too ambitious or requiring excessive resources. Mass production was complicated by the outdated equipment at the plant, which was suited only for the old ZIS-5 models. Entry into full production. Only on December 21, 1965, after a complete reconstruction of the factory, 
did the Euro 375 enter full mass production. The main trucks were the versions with closed metal cabins, the Euro 375D, whose production had begun in 1964. Nuclear protection and sealed cabins. At the beginning of the 1960s, the Soviet army understood that during a nuclear explosion, the greatest threat was not the blast wave, but radioactive contamination. For this reason, the cabins of the Ural 375 had to be fully metallic and airtight. Some trucks were equipped with special filtration and ventilation systems capable of maintaining an internal overpressure of 0.2 atmospheres, preventing contaminated air from entering the cabin. Variants of the Ural 375 Alongside the all-wheel drive truck, the Ural 377 was produced, featuring a 6x4 wheel configuration. This vehicle was designed to transport cargo and personnel on both dirt roads and paved terrain. Built on these two models were the Ural 375S and Ural 377S tractors, capable of towing semi-trailers with load capacities of 12 and 18 and a half tons, respectively. These versions also served as base chassis for various superstructures, mechanisms, and equipment. Engine and transmission. The Ural 375 was equipped with an eight-cylinder V-type gasoline engine known as the ZIL 375, with a displacement of 427 cubic inches and a power output of 180 horsepower. The transmission was a five-speed manual combined with a two-speed transfer case and an inter-axle differential lock mechanism, suspension and brakes. The braking system consisted of drum brakes with hydropneumatic actuation shared between the front and middle axles with a separate circuit for the rear axle. The front suspension used two longitudinal semi-elliptical springs with two hydraulic telescopic shock absorbers. The rear suspension was a bogey system with leaf springs. The vehicle's curb weight was 8 tons, with a payload capacity of 5 tons, and its maximum speed reached 47 miles per hour. Fuel capacity and range. The truck featured two fuel tanks, a main tank with a capacity of 79 gallons and an auxiliary tank of 16 gallons. Its fuel efficiency was 4.7 miles per gallon, giving it a range of 500 miles under standard consumption conditions. Civil use and export. The Ural 375 was used not only by the military but also in the national economy. One variant, different from the Ural 375D due to the absence of the air intake pipe, was manufactured for civilian use. This truck did not include a centralized tire inflation system, and export versions were produced under the name Ural 375E. The first batches sent in the mid-1960s went to Mongolia, followed by two more batches delivered to the German Democratic Republic. Global Export and Allies Beyond Eastern Bloc armies, the Ural 375 was supplied in large quantities to countries in Africa and Asia, allied with the Soviet Union, including Angola, Egypt, Ethiopia, Namibia, Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan, Iraq and Vietnam. Its reliability and durability made it highly valued for both military and civilian missions in difficult terrain, the Ural 4320 and modernization. On November 17, 1977, the Ural Automobile Plant released a new model, the Ural 4320, equipped with a Kama 740 diesel engine producing 210 horsepower. In 1982, the gasoline-powered Ural was modernized receiving the index M and becoming the Ural 375 DM. This version differed from the base model by its one-piece rims, new lighting equipment, and additional three-plank side panels. Interruptions and resumption of production. Production of the Ural 375 DM continued until 1991, resuming briefly in 1993. This restart was a forced measure after a devastating fire at the Kama Z plant on April 14, 1993, which halted the supply of diesel engines for the Ural 4320. During this period, the Urals once again used gasoline engines from the well-known ZIL model. Production figures. Over more than three decades, 110,000 Ural 375 trucks were produced at the mass plant, 
After manufacturing of these vehicles ended, only the diesel-powered Ural 4320 remained in the plant's model lineup. Engine replacement and new versions. The supply of Kamaz 740 engines never resumed. Instead, Ural trucks began to be equipped with diesel engines from the Arsavo plant. Six-cylinder, YAMZ. 236 engines with a displacement of 670 cubic inches and 180 horsepower, as well as eight-cylinder YAMZ, 238 engines, with a displacement of 970 cubic inches and 240 horsepower. Adaptation to environmental standards and modern models. Since 2014, the trucks have been fitted with new diesel engines meeting Euro for environmental standards. In 2015, the modernized Ural Next truck was introduced, featuring the cabin of the Gazon Next model and a six-cylinder diesel engine from the YMZ 536 family with a displacement of 408 cubic inches and 312 horsepower. This engine uses a common rail fuel system and a turbocharger. The Ural Next is produced exclusively for the civilian market, while the diesel Ural 4320 remains in military service, with production surpassing 1 million units. Legacy of the Ural 375 The Ural 375 not only represented a technological breakthrough in its time, but it also marked the beginning of a line of Soviet trucks capable of adapting to the harshest conditions. From its ability to ford rivers to resisting nuclear warfare scenarios, its multifunctional and rugged design made it an icon of military and civilian engineering, exported to various parts of the world and adapted to new technologies for decades. Innovation, durability and export. This truck stood out for its reliability in extreme terrain, its versatility for diverse tasks and its ability to meet different needs, whether transporting troops, cargo, serving as an artillery platform, or functioning as a civilian vehicle. Its legacy lives on through modern versions that preserve the essence of the Euro 375, proving that a well-designed vehicle can transcend generations and serve military and civilian purposes with equal efficiency. The defining trait, a truck that survived history. Throughout its existence, the Ural 375 proved to be a vehicle ahead of its time. Its toughness, advanced engineering, and ability to endure extreme conditions made it not only a symbol of Soviet military power, but also a reference point in industrial design, capable of evolving, adapting, and continuing to serve both in defense and in the civilian economy. If the story of the Ural 375, its ingenuity, and its unbreakable endurance surprised you, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and activate the bell so you won't miss more tales about these giants of transportation. Get ready to discover in the next journey another machine that pushes the limits and leaves its mark on history.